Welcome to the Chaos Isles Fractal. We're going to start out by engaging the initial trash mobs by pulling them together into a neat stack and cleave them down. The chanters will turn into any of the four different uncategorized fractal prisoners once they reach 50% health. Therefore, make sure you keep them dazed or stunned at that point to avoid their attacks. Once done, make sure you destroy the module that spawns in the altar to open the gate. The next section is covered with harpy golems that will knock you down from the small platforms that we have to jump on. Therefore, we're simply going to use the ranger's vape scale pet to blast stealth on the smoke field. This will let us pass the golems without trouble. Alternatively, if you want to kill the golems, make sure your party brings reflex skills along. The Chaos Anomaly itself is not our main challenge during this encounter. Instead, our main priority will have to be to deal with the golems in the proper sequence. Because these golems will spawn every time we push the Chaos Anomaly's health down by 25%, and every time they respawn, they grow stronger. Initially, we start with normal mobs, which turn to veterans, elites, and then a champion. As I said, these golems have to be killed in the proper sequence. Because for every group of golems, the last golem which you kill will not respawn during the next golem phase. So ideally, we want to leave the golem alive, which is the easiest to kill as a champion. But trust me, once they're champions, they're all quite badass. As we engage, the guardian will target Chop with his Spear of Justice before the Mesmer pulls the group together. That way, the guardian can easily pull out Chop from the stack, leaving him as the last golem we kill. By killing Chop as the last golem, him, he won't respawn again. The Chaos Anomaly has a few attacks to be mindful of. Firstly, he will drop a timed AoE bomb on you, which once it pops will drop a large AoE field on the ground which takes forever to despawn. Therefore, make sure that if you are targeted with this skill, move way out of the melee stack to drop it at a safe distance. As the anomaly reaches 75% health, the golems will respawn. So we start out by targeting Blight as the first to kill, so as to make sure that he will be the last one to spawn as a champion. Once Blight is dead, we pull the other two together and deal with them before re-engaging the anomaly. The second attack is an AoE lightning strike, which will target a location on the ground. Simply walk out of this. His third attack is a lightning beam, which he will target a single player with. Make sure this beam doesn't touch your teammates. As he faces again at 50% health, we're going to once again target Blight. But in this phase, smaller harpy golems will also spawn. These you will want to pull into the melee stack to kill them fast, as they will launch you with their ranged lightning orb. Each golem represents a different profession. Blight is a necromancer and will, apart from his auto attack, use Grasping Debt, where he shoots his hand out towards the group and deals massive damage. Also, he summons huge wells, which take large numbers of damage. Chop is a thief and will stealth himself and deal incredible amounts of melee damage. This guy can be really dangerous, even as a veteran or elite. Plink is a guardian and will drop the Test of Faith trap. Try your best not to walk through it, though he might also try to knock you into the trap. Lastly, Doc. He's a ranger, and as a champion, he deals insane amounts of damage with his solar beam auto attack. On top of that, he will use lunar impact on the group, which also deals a lot of damage, and knocks you down. Trust me when I say that the last golem we would want alive as a champion by the end is Doc. At the 25% health mark, if you've successfully killed Blight as the first golem, the champion Blight will now spawn, and he is arguably one of the easier ones to deal with. Make sure you dodge if you see him reach out his arm to shoot his hand out. And also be very cautious with his AoE well, as it will pulse immediately when cast. Be sure to break his break bar as often as possible and keep up reflex for the harpy golems that spawn in the far distance. Because if you let one of their orbs hit your group, the fight can change in an instant.
Blight is dead, we only have to finish off the Chaos Anomaly. The Hentai Forest bears its name for very obvious reasons, as you will see. The objective here is to light all four bonfires indicated on your minimap. This is done with the special action skill that you receive from the burning hut as you enter. You will only be able to use this skill once, so prepare a rotation of which party member takes which bonfire. During the run you receive frostbite, so be sure to stop momentarily at every bonfire to catch warmth before the legendary wolf lights out the fire. Keep up with the group and make sure you dodge or block the numerous tentacles. This section is not possible to solo on the master tier level, which is due to the legendary wolf turning off the burning hut where you receive your torch. For the record, this is a design decision that we do not agree with. For this encounter, the floor will light up dealing heavy damage if touched. This pattern changes significantly during the fight. However, the gladiator himself will have a shield which can only be removed by him standing in the lit up floor sections. When he touches a lit panel, he will gain a buff which stacks in intensity for however long he remains in the field. Meaning if he's in the field for 10 seconds, his shield will be down for 10 seconds. The brazen gladiator only has one attack himself, which we need to deal with, which is his auto attack chain. Here he will swipe twice before executing a 360 degree spin which dazes everyone in melee. This auto attack chain can be interrupted however, by simply having the party member who the gladiator targets step or dodge out of the gladiator's range as soon as the gladiator begins his chain. If done properly by all party members, the gladiator will never finish his auto attack chain damaging the remaining party members who should be located in max melee range. At 75% health, the hammers from above will begin to drop down occasionally, so make sure not to stand on the corners of the arena. Try your best to stay within melee range, as he will aggro to players that go further than 600 range away from him. He does so by applying a buff called Prey. Also, small harpy golems will spawn once again. Killing those fast will be your main priority. After the 50% health mark, the gladiator will gain another attack, which is a huge whirl attack. This can be interrupted by breaking his break bar as fast as possible.
and that is how to complete the Master Tier Chaos Isles Fractal. Enjoy your loop, until next time, we will see you in the mists.